many of you have ever seen a crime scene taped off with yellow police tape and wondered, how are they ever going to be able to search that area? By nature, we are curious beings, and we often wonder about things like this, especially today with shows like CSI. Wouldn't it be cool if we could be like them and search an entire crime scene and solve a case in under an hour? Unfortunately, this is not a very accurate depiction. Today, I'm going to tell you about the different methods for searching a crime scene, when to use each method, and the different things that crime scene investigators look for when searching a crime scene. According to Safferstein, the main types of searches are the strip search, also known as a line search, the grid search, the spiral search, the wheel search, also known as a ray search, and the quadrant search, also known as a zone search. A strip search, which looks something like this, uses one investigator, which starts at one end of the crime scene and walks straight to the other. He will then move slightly down the border and continue back across the crime scene again. This will continue until the entire crime scene has been covered. Often, this is best when you have crime scenes with well-established boundaries, which means that you know exactly where your crime scene starts and ends. A grid search uses two investigators. One investigator would start here, while the other one would start down here. They will move in from adjacent corners to form a perpendicular line with each other. Essentially, they're each performing their own line search. This is also good with well-established boundaries. In a spiral search, one investigator can choose to move in an outward or an inward spiral. Although this is a very great search for finding footprints, it can often be detrimental to a case because it's hard to make sure every area is covered. A wheel search, which is otherwise known as a ray search, involves several investigators. It would look something like this. Each investigator would start at one point and move directly into the center. However, this could leave much evidence undiscovered, so it's important to make sure each investigator is assigned to an area inside the rays as well. This can be great for larger areas. Another search that's great for larger areas is a quadrant search or a zone search. In this search, the investigation area is divided into zones. Additionally, these zones can be subdivided. This is great for houses and apartments. You may be surprised to know that the investigators do not determine how to search a crime scene based on the type of crime. According to the book written by Safferstein, investigators use their knowledge, training, and experience to determine how to search a crime scene. Often, one murder crime scene may be searched with a grid search and the other may be searched with a strip search. I'm sure you're wondering what crime scene investigators look for when searching the scene. One of the most important things they look for is, are the doors locked or unlocked? Here they're trying to determine signs of forced entry, such as tool markings or if a screen was pushed in or out. They also look for signs of struggle, such as, is the house in order and is there anything broken? Things such as broken picture frames or broken glasses can be a sure sign of a crime. Other things they look for are things that are out of place. For instance, a toilet seat being up in a female apartment is a sign of something being out of place. In addition, they could look for animal fur in a house with no pets or furniture that may be out of place. Sometimes during the crime, the person committing the crime may push couches or chairs in front of doors. Another very important thing to look for during an investigation is cues to as how many people were at the scene of the crime. Things such as the number of glasses at a dinner table or the number of cars in a driveway can be good determinants for this. In shooting or stabbing crimes, investigators look for additional evidence. They look for things with blood on them, bloody shoe prints, blood spider patterns, and a possible weapon used in the crime. I'm sure this is a lot of information to take in at once. Now that you know the different methods for searching a crime scene, when to use each method, and how and, and what investigators look for when searching a crime scene. I hope this gives you more in insight into shows like CSI. Although not the same as on TV, crime scene investigation can be very interesting. Maybe you too could be a crime scene investigator.